Let's talk about the three cases for a function to be discontinuous. And this is a pretty important concept in the beginning of calculus one. So if you're taking calculus one, hopefully this right here can clear things up and make it easier for you guys to understand. All right, here's the first one. And this is the one that we have seen back in pre-calc. And this is where the function has a vertical asymptote. And suppose we're just working with a rational function. Then in that case, we have to pay attention to when we have a non-zero over zero situation. And I will tell you guys what I mean by that. Have a look. Let's say we have a function f of x, and let's say this is 1 over x plus 2. As we can see, we have a 1 on the top, which is always non-zero. But how about for the bottom? How can this be equal to zero? Well, we just have to go ahead, put this to be zero, and then solve it, and we get x is equal to negative 2. And as we can see, when x is equal to negative 2, the top is non-zero, and the bottom will be equal to zero. And in this case, we will end up with a vertical asymptote there. And here's the picture for you guys. So let's say here we have negative 2, and this is the vertical asymptote. And in fact, this is just the classic graph of 1 over x, but you move to the left two times. And we also have a horizontal asymptote here. And either way, you will end up with a picture like this. A graph it, which, whichever way that you would like. So that's it. And right here, we can clearly see that the function is discontinuous because this part and that part, they are not being connected. So I will say something like f is discontinuous, d-i-s-c-o-n-t, not discount, discontinuous. The discount has been discontinuous, I, I guess. By the way, f is discontinuous at x equal to negative 2 because the b says she because <laughs> vertical asymptote. All right, so that's the first case. Now, let's take a look at the second case. This right here is very similar to the first one, but it's of course very different. This is where the function has a removable discontinuity. And let's again talk about just the rational function. In this case, we pay attention to the case that when we have 0 over 0. So let's see. Here is an example. And because I use f over there already, so let's say this is my function g, g of x. And let's say this is equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus x minus 6. And now some of you guys might have noticed this already, because the bottom is actually factorable, and when we factor it, we will get x plus 2 times x minus 3. So it seems like, why don't we just cancel this out, right? So it's just the same as 1 over x plus 2. It's the same as the first one. No, not exactly. So this is the time that we really have to pay close attention to the domain issue. So here's the deal. Domain, remember whenever we have a rational function, we have to pay attention to that the bottom cannot be equal to 0. And we always have to refer to the original before we do any cancellations. So based on this, the domain is we will have to set up x squared minus x minus 6 cannot be equal to 0. And this means we can factor it, right? x plus 2 times x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. And it means x cannot be negative 2 and x cannot be positive 3. So we have to make sure we don't plug in these two x values into our function. All right. So. Here's the deal. This and that, yes, we can technically cancel it. Just go ahead and do that. And it does give us just 1 over x plus 2 at the end. But we really have to take this into considerations as well, because we said it, x cannot be equal to 3 based on the original expression. So how can we make that happen? Well, here's a picture for you guys. Let me give you guys the picture right here. So if you want to make the graph of this, this right here, it's like 99.999% the same as this. Anyway, let's go ahead and put down our vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 2. And of course, we also have the horizontal asymptote. And the picture looks very similar, like this and like that. Cool. But they are not exactly the same. Because right here, we also have to make sure that x is not equal to 3. 
yeah? And in fact, notice when x is equal to 3, if you put it back, what do we get is, on the top we get 3 minus 3, which is 0. Put 3 in here, we also get 0. And that's the case that we get 0 over 0. And we will actually have what we call the removable discontinuity. And the way that you are going to show it on the graph is, you go to when x is equal to 3 on the graph. And, well, this is not going to show up on your graphing calculator. You will just have to do this on your own. When x is 3, you go to the graph, and you will just have to erase that. And then, just to emphasize, you will have to put an open circle. So this right here is a picture for a removable discontinuity. This is a picture for a removable discontinuity. And why do we say this is a removable discontinuity? It's because you see that this curve is not being connected from here to here because there's an open circle. However, if you can somehow fill in the hole, it's just a hole. If you fill in, you can fix it and it will be continuous afterward. So to me, removable means that it's fixable easily. So that's the idea. And the picture is like this, just like open circle on the graph. And if you fill in the circle, you can fix it easily. So here is the conclusion for the function g. I will tell you g is, again, this continuous. And we have two places that we'll have to write down. First, we'll say at x equal to negative 2, because we have a vertical asymptote, just like the first one. So I'll just say because of vertical asymptote, and then at x equal to 3, it's also discontinuous because we get a RD. Yeah, so much easier to just say RD. So pay close attention to this right here. And another thing that you will have to know how to do is, what's the y value of the open circle? Because this right here is going to be how you are going to compute the limit. Well, you can see that, imagine if this is a closed circle, all you have to do is put a 3 into here after you cancel it. So you get 1 over 3 plus 2, which is 1 over 5. So the y value here is 1 over 5. Now, finally, for the third case, this is when we have a jump discontinuity. And this usually happens when we have a piecewise function. Even though this is not always the case, but this is perhaps the most common case. Just like this is the most common case for vertical asymptotes, but in fact, when you have log functions, you may also have to worry about vertical asymptotes. But we'll talk about the special cases in another video. All right, so let me just give you guys a piecewise function first. So let's take a look. And you guessed it. Yeah, I will call this h of x. And let's say we have the following, 2x, minus 3 if x is less than or equal to 1 and let's say we have x plus 2 if x is greater than 1. And the best way for me to illustrate the idea is to give you guys a picture. So I will give you guys a picture right here. First off, we have to pay attention to the number 1. That's like the most important point right here. So let's say we have 1 right here. Plugging 1 into here. 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1. And let's say negative 1 is right here. So first, we will have a closed circle here. And this is closed because we have x is equal to. All right? Next, notice they are just linear functions. So we can just go ahead and pick another x value, plug in, so we can get another point, so we can just connect the dots. Let's say when x is equal to 0, Put it here, 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So let's say negative 3 is right here. And you see, we have another point, And we can just connect the dots. This right here will be the picture for the first piece. Then that's it. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for this. Even though this right here says x is greater than 1, but you're still plugging 1 into here. 1 plus 2 is 3. And let's say 3 is right here. But instead of putting down a closed circle, we will just have to use an open circle because x is greater than 1. So that's how you do it. That's how you start the graph for this one. And then again, let's say when x is equal to 2, putting here 2 plus 2 is 4. So let's say 4 is 
somewhere here and we have another point and you see that that will be the picture all right and as we can see there is a jump from here to here just like when you play super mario yeah i know you might be wondering isn't this also a jump well imagine if you are playing super mario can you really jump from negative infinity to positive infinity no i don't think so i don't think super mario can do that unfortunately so in order for this to be a jump both ends right they have to be finite when you end up with an infinity or negative infinity that's defined to be a vertical asymptote all right so this is a picture for jump and then right here i will just write this down for you guys h is discontinuous at here we have one x equal to one because there is a jump all right so this right here covers all the three cases for a function to be discontinuous and as i said earlier these are the most common cases you will have some special cases like with special functions like different functions but maybe i can do another video for you guys hopefully this right here helps hopefully this right here clear the VARD and also the jump for you guys especially if you are just taking calculus one uh, right now let me know how the class is going and let me know if this helps and let me know if you have anything else that you would like to know and i'll try to make some videos for you guys all right so that's it